Uh, How's that go again? <laughs> hey, be nice to me. Are you really recording right now? Uh, welcome back, uh, y'all, to the Daily Scuttlebutt with Ivy's Family Factotum. Someone's getting ready to go teach. Yeah. Hate to see you go, but love to watch you leave. Never. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I'm inside today. Just no, you need to be outside because I know I'll get out there because you're sick and you can't be, you know, festering your sickness in here, getting everybody else sick. Well, everybody else is sick. I am trying <laughs> not to say, get sick. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say everybody is sick, but me right now, and I am not trying to get sick. And since Ivy, because you don't want me to say your middle name. I'd prefer not. Exactly. So, yes. <sighs> Please. 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 So, get your butt outside. I will. Well, I do need to break out the laser because I want to test that out. For one, I need to get the auger put onto the tractor. For two, because I'm still, I guess we are still in a conundrum with our septic because oh, yeah. uh, you know just looking into the different systems that we can do so i know that we said that we're doing a mound system and we're doing a mound system we're doing mounts well for one the mound systems like one of the most expensive things and they only last like 10 years so with that being said, with that being said <laughs> what happened was we're we're gonna kind of so obviously i i need to know like where our groundwater is i need to know because I, I can do my own perk tests kind of right I, I know how to do it i have the tools to do it and the locations to to do it with right so because stuff has been cleared out. So that's why I need to get the auger put onto the tractor. That way I can go and, and dig the holes. And it's an 18 inch hole, 12 inches in diameter. And you're you're doing your, your perk test with that. And into a few different locations. Um, there There's actually a few different areas that I'd also like to, to look at of possibly doing, you know, more of a traditional uh, septic system but that also require possibly having to move some items and move some stuff around. Um, we will see. We're still gonna do that, but right now I actually need to know. So if you guys have missed out on when I did the, the water level thing for the septic to see how much I needed for a riser, because we were gonna base this land, this property area where the house is gonna be based off of the driveway, which is already an established driveway where I had the truck. And whenever I did the water level to see what the difference was to the septic tank, it was 37 inches of drop. So that's three feet, one inch of drop. It does not look like that in person. So I need to figure out what the, the slope of this land is from the septic tank down because obviously we it's much cheaper to be able to do a gravity fed system I already know that it slopes but i need to know how much it slopes and then if we if we need to bring in any type of material then i can do that so because they have uh what's it called it's a an inter intermittent um let me i'm here at the computer uh let me do yeah, it's an intermittent sand filter. Um, but they, so normally that, that style of uh, the affluent filter, because that's basically all you're doing. So our tank, obviously, you still have to get your tank pumped out uh, roughly, you know, every three to five years. All depends on how much you use it, right? So for us, we only ever plan to put only black water into the septic so it's only going to be the stuff from toilets so we plan on having in the main house there's going to be two bathrooms the guest or the i say guest house but it's the gathering house is going to have two restrooms that's four toilets and then eventually the the garage whenever we do the garage it's going to have 
one, possibly two toilets in it. <clears throat> and, hi Willow. I know, mom left you. She wants to go outside. You want to go outside, huh? We'll go outside in a second. I promise. Oh, bless me. Uh, I know. So, with that, um, they have, it's, it's, it's more or less putting a, a cap on top of the land. So, if you're going to do the full uh, intermittent sand filter, you're actually building a box. Either, either you can buy the actual concrete. It basically looks like a septic tank, and it's filled with, you know, the, the rock and the sand. Let me let her out quick. Willow, you're killing me. Kill me, Smalls. Look, I even show them. I let you know, so you can go. Be going with you. Bye. She likes to go and lay in front of the the playhouse because that that's where they go out and they do their schoolwork. So she goes out there and, and lays at the front door. She's she's got to protect her her family, right? So what I was saying is that. The sand filters, either it's a, the big concrete boxes that looks like a septic tank and it's filled with the different sand media and all that. And then um, it basically goes through that and it filters it out. And then after it goes through that, either you can recircle it to go back through there twice, two or three times, right? And then it, it goes to another tank to be able to pump out. And that still has to go into another trench type system to then go into the ground right so it's it's just like an added filter uh, added filtration before putting the affluent in straight into the ground right and some of those like i've i've watched maybe over 100 videos now uh, on this uh, just different types of systems going through actually reading um i even have in here um what is it? The the Arkansas Arkansas. Wow. Yeah, words are hard, Anson. It's the Arkansas Administrative Code uh, Department of Health uh, Divisions. It's the uh, Rule zero zero seven point zero four point one nine tag zero zero one. Because obviously, I still want to be able to do it per the code, but not necessarily having to go. So we're on over ten acres. We don't have to get permits. We don't have to do that. You know, you're kind of exempt from that. But whenever it comes to actually installing a system, and I've actually talked to the guy that came here to pump it, that the homeowner can install uh, a system, especially if you're if you're in over uh, ten acres of land, that the homeowner can do all the work themselves, and that you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. It just has you have to you know meet. Get out of my coffee, you stupid fly. Come on. God, I hate flies. Uh, but I'm still going through and, and I'm learning, you know, all the, the stuff that I can, rules and regulations. And and some of it gets kind of uh, confusing with some of the things. Like you almost have to have a, a doctorate to be able to read some of this stuff. Um, but just going through with a lot of the, the things that are in there. And there's actually a few different. Let me see if I can get down here to where. I was reading, um, cause it goes through, you know, soil conditions and stuff. Obviously for, well, I know there was already septic here. It was already a traditional type system. So whether the previous homeowner installed that or not go away, potential spam, um, or actually had someone install it that I don't know. I don't even know how old the system was. I don't know. I know when this house was put in because the concrete that is up there were the stuff, well, at least the addition, right, of the trailer that was here. I know when all that was put in. So, and that was early 90s. And then I know before we bought the, the property, it sat vacant for seven years. But just going through some of, you know, the things here, I knew that the, the person that, or at least the, the person that we bought the property from, which was the child of the people that actually lived here, or the guy that lived here, 
that she grew up in the 80s. So, and we just know by, you know, the, <laughs> the different stuff, right? We never physically met her, never really talked to her or anything like that. But just going through some of the stuff that was here, you know, we kind of say, yeah, this, this is definitely, you know, an 80s, 90s child. So, um, obviously the, the system was working even after we got here and it, it had sat, you know, empty for, for so long. I mean, yes, the tank had to be pumped out whenever we first got here. Because it, it probably hadn't been pumped out in a long time. And we continued to use it. Because we had the tank inspected whenever we first moved in. And we actually found that there was a septic here. Because that was not on any of our, our plans or uh, paperwork whenever we bought the property. So that, to me, kind of makes me think that, yes, they did not have it professionally installed. Because it wasn't on any record. Um, but with that... I know that it was working. So whenever we go through and you can kind of test too, if you have a well on your property, obviously you want your well to be up above of where septic is going to be. So it should be uphill, you know, of where that all of your stuff is going to be. And just know too, that if the water that's under the ground, just because this, the land is sloping down this way, the water that's underground might still be going that way. So you just kind of still have to be, you know, certain distances away in, in the event that, you know, that, that does happen. So we are doing that, but that's also, you can measure, you know, from that ground level down your well to see where your water sits and get, you know, rough estimates of where your water table is. And actually, our well right now is actually really close to almost the, like the level of the pond. So I, I can get measurements and what we're going to do. So I did purchase a, a laser level thanks to all of our uh, subscribers, you know, for uh, helping out with that, with, you know, donations and, and sending the super stickers and super chats and, and stuff and helping us out whenever we do our live shows, you know, with the, the super chats, all of that that you guys have sent us is what's going towards these tools, the things that we need. Right. So that's what we continue. That's what we said. A hundred percent of stuff that you're putting in goes right back into the property for materials, for tools, for the things that we need to be able to do what we're doing. And then obviously at the end of the year, we still donate the 20% back to the veteran community. And last year we just, we didn't really make, a, a whole lot so we just went ahead and whatever that amount was which was like less than forty dollars um we're gonna roll that into this year so we're gonna take i, and I have it recorded i already have it put into savings and such we're not touching it it's just gonna sit there it's gonna compound you know the interest and the savings and then from that we're gonna take that and the 20% that we make at the end of this year throughout the whole year. And cause I always take every single month and I take the 20% the for that month, set it aside 20, 20% for that month, set it aside. And then at the end of the year, right, we take all those earnings and then we give that back to the veteran community. Uh, but jumping off topic, uh, like I said, we, we definitely can't do this without your help and we definitely thank you and we appreciate you uh, so much. But we're still kind of out of, we don't necessarily know what we're wanting to do because I need to do the soil test. I already know we have a lot of clay content in this area where we are physically putting the, the septic system. I'm not 100% certain. I know that we have a lot of clay in this area and other areas of the property. Some of the other areas that I've dug is high clay content, but right here in the area that we're at, on this side of the creek, I don't know, because all the majority of the digging I've done has been on the other side of the creek, the, the front side of the property. Um, and there's a lot of silt up there. So with that, you know, we, we may even have to do what's called a capping fill. And all that is um, of where your observable seasonal water is. And for our area, April 
is the most rain, right? That on average, that is the most rain that we get per month is normally April is, is the wet season, right? So March, April, May, give or take April always being the, the wettest. And then whatever that water table is for that, that's where, and you should be able to see that in your soil. So if you're digging down and you're looking at the, the different colors and the, the different things in within your soil, you should be able to see where that high water table is and, and low water tables and all that. Uh, plus monitoring your well, right? Of seeing where are those levels and, and checking that, you know, every so often uh, in your well. So that's, that's stuff that I'm going to go ahead and start doing now and just start testing our soil, looking at the soil. I've already, like I've been keeping track of our well with that because obviously as you're using water that water's going to go down uh, we do have a leak someplace so whenever the pump kicks on i can see so where the the line comes from the the well head because we actually have the i forgot what it's called but you can disconnect it it's because it connects to the the bulkhead um, of your well and right now i'm just i can't think because i'm sick right of what that is called but I don't have to replace everything. I only have to replace just the, the piping on the exterior side of the or casing to where the tank is to the well house. So that's roughly a 10 foot section. Uh, so somewhere in there, there's a leak. Um, or even, you know, it's one of the, the fittings might be loose. I don't know. So, but because I, I can see whenever the pump kicks on that the hole that I have in my well house going down in the center, I see water coming in from under underneath the ground. So, um, I know it's in that area, but we, we will continue to just research some of these other things. I'm, I'm about 50, 50 now on the, the mound system. Cause I just don't think we can afford it. Uh, especially if it's a system that's only going to last seven to 10 years and then have to turn around and fork out another, you know, 10 grand in materials. Cause a lot of those you're supposed to have a, a primary and a secondary system. So two mounds and you use one at a time, you use this one for the 10 years. And then once that starts going bad, then you switch it over to this one. And then when you're using this one, you replace this one, all the materials in it to, to make a new mound and you just keep going back and forth, but you're having to fork over all that material to redo those mounds. And that's just, no, I, I don't want to do that. I, I would like to find something that is going to last longer than that and just uh, go with that. But if for whatever reason that we need to, which is a capping fill, all that means is that you're adding just a little bit of material to the ground of where you're already going to be putting your stuff just to give it a little bit of extra soakness, right? Uh, of whatever you're needing. But that means that you're not necessarily having to dig the deep trenches in um, for your stuff. So you're digging a, a shallower trench, which I can just dig one big trench using, you know, Lil Mac and some shovels. Cause I'll just go in and I'll just scrape up some of the, the topsoil. And then you're, you still want to, you don't want it to be compacted or, or hard. You want it to be scraped out. So if I need to go through there, you know, with the, the tines of our box blade, just to kind of break up that, that surface tension. Uh, Cause you want that stuff to be loose. Just kind of break all that up and, and then put, you know, our rocks in and then all the stuff and then a, a cat fill, right? You're just adding more layers plus our land right now like i said it does slope and then it kind of comes back up a little bit and then the creek right so as it go, goes from the septic tank it kind of goes downhill 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 and then it's like a little valley and then uphill a little bit and then into the creek so in that area if, if we have to kind of fill that in a little bit to where it's a little more flatter in that area okay we'll, we'll see um, but yeah, cause with that first, the slopes and stuff like that, I think it's, what does it say? 
it has to be less than a uh, 12 percent um 12 percent slope or something like that i'm trying to see um Yeah, maximum depth 18 inches in soils, less than blah, 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 blah. No reduction is allowed in a moderate seasonal water table, blah, 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 capping fills. It's so a maximum adjustment of seven inches. So, yeah, so that one, for it to be considered a cap fill, it's only an additional seven inches that you're adding a material. So, for me, that'd be like one, possibly two truckloads worth of material, or possibly even just getting that material from my own property that I try to do just with Little Mac. Right. I mean, is, is it the, the, the greatest? No, but it's what I have. It's what I got. <laughs> it's what I have. And that's, we'll just do with what we got, you know, until, cause I already know, you know, folks have said that, yep, they want to come help uh, within the community. We definitely appreciate you wanting to come help most definitely. But right now those equipments are either being utilized elsewhere and are going to be continued be utilized elsewhere before they can get to us uh, because it's it's already been scheduled right and then there's other equipment that is still broken it's still in need of repair so until it can be repaired it can't get to us either so and this is stuff that you know we need now so it, it's kind of do i want to continue to wait or do i just want to try to do what i what i can with what i got and that's what we're all about we, we do everything that we can with what we got and just hope it's good enough. And you, you do the best you can with what you have. And that's, to me, all part of homesteading, right? You, you do with what you got. So uh, definitely appreciate you guys for sticking around. You know, even though I'm under the weather, everybody's on the kids still under the weather. Dad's a little under the weather, but he's still out and about. Uh, we ended up going and picking up a car for him to tear apart. And, uh, <laughs> and such, cause that's what he loves to do. And then, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. So definitely appreciate y'all for sticking around, following the journey. We will do, we will be all right. We'll heal. We'll get better. Um, I am going to go ahead and say thank you for everyone that will already say, you know, get well soon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's, it's that time of season, I guess. So yeah. All right. Well, thank y'all. And last but not least, always thank a veteran at every chance you get, not only on Veterans Day. Uh, uh, excuse me. And we'll see you on the next one. Later, y'all.